The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too and there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can offer clients access to local and international investments. A world where you can engage with clients meaningfully, backed by powerful data and insights with mobile-friendly technology. A world where you can build business efficiencies through scaled managed accounts and bulk reporting. And a world where you can get all the latest news, research and insights to spot the changes that really matter. Wealth is more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. A world of opportunity awaits you at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantitis and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into my prosperity was born in Warsaw, Poland, but raised in Australia, represented Victoria in soccer, has studied in Shanghai, China and speaks three languages. What an underachiever. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Carolina Kushik. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for the warm welcome. <laughs> Not at all. I really feel like I need to go out and, and do more sport and learn more things clearly to keep up that's an impressive background you've got there oh thank you very much (laughs) now I'm super keen to dive into all things my prosperity but let's just get to know you a little first uh, through your use of technology so tell me tell me what is your most used emoji do you even use emojis Oh, a hundred percent. So I'm all about the visuals. I don't like, I'm not a woman of many words. So (laughs) if someone messages me, it's usually a thumbs up. So whether it's the boss telling me, oh, you know, uh, trying to get me to do something, I'll do the thumbs up or say it's, um, you know, a client that's running late, I'll just do the thumbs up. Yeah. My mum asks me, how are you going? Thumbs up. (laughs) So it's just a good old rounder. It is, isn't it? And shorthand. We love shorthand. That's fantastic. <laughs> and how about, look, we all live with our, our smartphones permanently or, or almost surgically attached to us. If you had to wipe everything off your smartphone and then just keep three apps, which three would you keep? Yeah, so a no-brainer for me. The first one, uh, I need to keep in touch with my family and friends. So mm-hmm. for me, that would be uh, Messenger because yep. message a lot. I've got a lot of group chats in there. Um, you know, we share a lot of photos, etc. cetera. Uh, the next one would be my banking app because it is just mm-hmm. so easy to do transfers and, you know, you don't need to drag around your wallet anywhere. You just pay for everything through the app. Um, and the third one, I am being a little bit biased, but I do love the My Prosperity app because I get to see my entire financial world in one place. I don't need to log into 20 different places. So they would nice. be my three. Nice. Very nice. And on brand. I love it. So (laughs) to that point, let's dive into my prosperity. Now, look, a number of the listeners probably are aware of what you guys do, but just in case they're not, anybody listening isn't aware of it, then let's sort of, you know, go to a high level first. Where do you guys sit in the advice tech or fintech space? You know, sort of what category do you generally fall under? Who are you generally lined up against when people are looking at a tech tool? Yeah, absolutely. And yes, you're correct. Uh, A lot of people have heard about My Prosperity because we have been around for 11 years. But, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so some uh, people may have heard about us through the traps, but not exactly understand what we do, or they may have seen us years ago. So essentially what we are is we are a client portal. We are a front-end solution. 
what we are not is a CRM or a yep. SLA generation tool or a projection tool. Um, so I'll give you a really good analogy. One of our top partners actually said to me once, you know what, KK, I would never invite my clients into my back office. I would always invite them into the boardroom. X plans my back office. My prosperity is my boardroom. And it was a really great analogy because, mm. you know, we, we're not that back office tool. Uh, with there no. are so many great back office tools. Uh, we don't play in that space. We, we, yeah. we, you know, all our funds go into the front office, so to speak. So if that's where we play. Uh, we are an all-in-one sort of, you know, client portal. So there are, uh, I guess, we don't really have, um, you know, many direct competitors because there are yep. so many indirect competitors, you know, that help with different, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, solving problems to different yeah. types of solutions. Um, yeah. So uh, I guess the main primary problem um, our app is trying to solve is to really just help Australian households access one place to view their entire personal financial affairs and collaborate with their financial advisor in a more engaging way. Because the reality is client engagement for many firms hasn't changed in the last 20 years. Yep. Um, and, you know, our founder, Peter McCarthy, he was a, a very well-respected financial planner back in the day who ran a small boutique business here in Melbourne mm-hmm. and looked after mm-hmm. very high net worth uh, affluent client base. And, you know, that's when he realised back then that there has to be a more engaging way. It has to be a more efficient way to service clients. But at the same yeah. time, give the clients one place to go and have mutual visibility over everything, you know, documents, balances, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. And look, it is a um, – the, the challenge with this sort of stuff is that actually to the public – as far as they're concerned, why doesn't that already exist? You know, it's funny, isn't it? Like it's <laughs> to them, it doesn't seem like a big thing. Whereas in the game, we all know it is quite a big thing to have everything in one place. Um, so it's almost like tools like yours have just got us to where everybody thought we should have already been, um, okay. which is which is so interesting. Um, so in terms of then, so from the practices perspective, then the do you find when you've got the practice utilizing this t- the tool for their clients, who's the primary user within the practice, or do you find it's every sort of member of the team ends up interacting via the app? Yeah, absolutely. So look, we've got two key clients really. It's it's the end user and the advisor. Mm. Um, and from an advisor perspective, we've actually had a record number of partner logins in the last uh, couple of months uh, into the practice port into the practice portal, which is increasing. Um, and so it's not only the advisor that's having visibility, but uh, they're adding, you know, their power planners and support staff to be able to, you know, send documents and, and you know, there's more and more staff accounts being activated. So so that's that's uh, been, you know, quite an interesting statistic for us uh, because it is now widely used amongst uh, the firm. Um, and, you know, when you look at the end users, uh, it's also interesting because out of the last... 100,000 client logins, close to 80% of them were through the mobile app, not the browser on the website. So, um, you know, there is a misconception, I think, still out there that it's for young people. But, (laughs) um, you know, age demographics have changed. Um, We have an app that can assist any client. You know, the features used by end users vary. Um, You know, a younger person might be interested in their cash flow and goals. Um, you know, pre-retirees just want access to net worth estate planning and, you know, yeah. uh, be an easy, an easy way to, you know, and everyone's got iPads and, and you know, um, yes. smartphones now, right? Um, at the end of the day, that's where the advisor's clients are. They're always either on their phone or their iPad. So, yeah. um, so it just makes sense. And I think, look, I think COVID accelerated the adoption of technology <laughs> in a way. Yeah. Um, I remember I used to have some advisors just saying, oh, my clients don't even know how to use Zoom. But then when COVID hit, they're like, you know, they're like, send me yeah. a Zoom link now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so true. And I think the other thing that, you know, you've got to really watch the behavior of the people around you to truly understand how things have changed. Because I think, you know, the advisor themselves might not be doing certain things, but watch the family, you know, how are they interacting? And most of us, even when we're chilling on the couch, have a secondary screen open. So you might be watching TV, but you've got your iPad in front of you or your mobile in front of you. Or your, oh, ab- absolutely. Right? So, absolutely. The, so people are constantly, even when they're after hours, they've probably got one of those devices open. And so that's where, to me, um, 
you know, understanding behavior is so important because that could be the most convenient time for them to look at something or to act on it or to even execute something. Who knows, right? So we've got to really think about when we act. I mean, I know there's some random things I do when I'm sitting in front of the TV that is almost life admin stuff. So we sort of need to adjust, don't we? So that it's, they don't have to necessarily, like you say, log on to a website. What if it's just easier if it's in, in an app? You know, yeah, this is, yeah. it's, it's, it's a different type of thinking. To that end, is it an app itself, like an app as in from the app store, or is it a link to a website that is, is what people would get on their phone or iPad? So there's two ways to yep. log into My Prosperity. So they will get a, a link that they can put onto their website. So yep. you probably notice some um, firms have like a client login button. Mm -hmm. Uh, But when you click on that client login button, it typically um, goes to a client portal like ourselves. Although I have seen some cheeky advisors say uh, client portal, but when you click in there, it then goes to a different page and it says, log into Hub24, log into Network, (laughs) (laughs) not only client portal, it's just log into your portfolio. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, And then obviously we've got the app, right? So yes, but they can go. So so. What the better firms are doing is they're getting their clients to download the app um, as soon as they onboard them mm. uh, and, and they tell them just, you know, download the app on your iPad and on your phone um, and, you know, this is this is the way that we're going to service you moving forward. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so it is in the App Store and, Google and um, Android. Yeah, perfect. So, because they do and, – and for those of you listening who don't sort of – fully understand why I'm asking the difference because it sounds like it's the same, right? It sounds, well, you're just accessing the same thing. The difference for me that is important is once something is an app, then the thing that's possible is things like notifications, right? So that's a world to me that's exciting. Whereas a website or something via the web only, then it's very difficult to nudge them you know, like to to remind them to go in or to get them to do something is a bit harder. Uh, and really your only option is say email. Whereas if something's, you know, as an app, then you do have that lovely notification. And we all know how interruptive notifications are, right? So that's a powerful tool to get people to do things. So why don't we start there? Is So do you guys have the ability to have notifications via the app and how are people using that? Oh, absolutely. So in-app notifications are huge for us because when Mm. you think about it, like you just mentioned before, you know, when advisors are sending an email to a client, you know, they might not see it till late at night. They'll forget about it. And then their, you know, support staff are are playing phone tag for the rest of the week. So (laughs) um, we eliminate a lot of that follow-up because you can create um, what we call them to-dos, which are essentially reminders within the app. So you might create a reminder and say, um, you know, I need you to upload document ABC. I need it by a certain date. You can also choose how often you want them to get reminded because, you know, some firms don't want their clients to get reminded, you know, every few days. They might want it every week. So that's fine. You can choose, you know, there's there's a whole heap of options there. Um, and so what that means is that your client will not only get a push notification on the app, but an email as well, just to remind you. Yep. And every few days, uh, if that's the setting you've got it on, they'll get keep getting reminded until they've completed that task. And then once they've completed that task, it will just uh, stop reminding them and they'll actually have uh, almost like that view of all the tasks that have been completed uh, within the app. We do have a new feature that we launched about two years ago. When when I say new, it's because we've been around for 11 years, but (laughs) it's really becoming like one of our most used features because we've got statistics on what firms are using. Mm. Um, And it's really interesting to see that Rooms is becoming more and more popular by a lot of advisors because yes, one, you can, you know, create these notifications in Rooms, but Rooms is a collaboration place where you're moving away from email essentially and the easiest way that a lot of advisors have told me that they've started getting their clients to use rooms is they say, look, email's not secure, um, you know, there's no reminders in email, whereas mm. in here, you know, we can share documentation securely, we can chat in here securely, we can, um, you know, add other, you know, third parties if necessary. So, for example, if they were um, invite a solicitor in to help with estate planning. They can do that as well. Yeah. Um, so it's been quite powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think, you know, you mentioned before about people saying, oh, you know, different generations um, may or may not use this technology. The thing about, um, a, you know, the younger generation is if you were to 
<laughs> get their phone and even mine, and I'm not that young, um, you, you know, to be an app on somebody's phone is is multiple scrolls to even get to an app, right? We've got pages and pages of them, whereas the older generations don't have that many apps on their phone. So, in fact, mm-hmm. if you have one for your practice, then you can be top of the pops. You can be on the front page. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> actually it can be – it can be far more exposure to your practice than otherwise you would, you know, have. Yeah. So so I actually think it's a powerful thing for the older generation and also you're opening worlds to them that otherwise they might not. And as long as you've got a great onboarding process that really steps them through how, how things work and how to use the tool, then often they're very appreciative of that energy and that attention. So, you know, I actually think um, we've almost got to reverse our approach to this and focus on it for older clients because I think they really will um, be grateful um, for, you know, demonstrating more, introducing them to a a new tool and helping them use it. So, yeah, that's what we found anyway in our practice. Um, You know, they've really responded well. Yeah, absolutely. And look, even the example of my mum, right, um, you know, she's got her iPad and, you know, if she can't, you know, we, we, we chat every day, right? So if I mm. forget to send her the coffee emoji in the morning, it's like she gets worried and, you know, she tries to call <laughs> me on Messenger. If she can't catch me on Messenger, she tries to call me on um, WhatsApp. If she can't call me on WhatsApp, <laughs> she tries a different app. I'm like, so, uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's good. Yeah, absolutely. And so... It, I'm sure that particularly given the time frame you guys have been around, but also the number of practices you've worked with, then you'd have a good sense for, you know, who this works well for versus who struggles. Now, I'm betting it's probably not as much about the practices self as it is about the way they decide to use the tool. But do you see anything that stands out between the ones that really nail it and it, get, and it works well versus the others? Oh, absolutely. So, look, we are not for firms who just want to be doing what they've been doing for the last 10 years. Um, yeah. and, and think more about the back office. Um, these are typically firms that resist change. They look yep. back with negativity um, and, you know, they do get busy, right? And, mm. and they want to focus on other things and that's fine. However, uh, it's quite simple for us. We want to work with firms that are looking to grow and scale and are focused on the client experience. And, you know, and these firms are looking forward with optimism and, and they can see that, you know, this is, the way of the future um you know like i said before you know the client engagement for many firms you know hasn't changed over the years and Mm. um and if you look at any other tech company outside the financial advice um industry you know they've been able to help you know solve a lot of the problems in other industries where i feel here there's been it's been a little bit you know it takes time yeah Um, an effort and, uh, you know, I, I think I mentioned this prior to the recording that, you know, a lot of the time when I'm chatting to advisors, uh, there's a big educational piece there. That's why we're, we've made it, um, you know, for us as a business, we've made sure that we've got a very good, uh, you know, uh, account management team, support team, tech support team. So we know that, um, you know, some advisors uh uh, want to make the change they just um you know they've, they've, they've got other things or other matters that that uh, prioritize but yeah uh, if they do uh, and want to not uh, almost like fall behind in, in in this you know obviously the way that tech's moving forward then it is a really good time to give it a go um you know the best thing that you can I mean what's the worst that's going to happen right yeah. um, give it a go work with the team learn from other advisors i mean we've got you know, 600 firms that we work with. Um, so, so we really drill down into what works for them and what doesn't. And, you know, our team can actually sit with them and go through it because it really depends on what they're trying to solve. Like, yeah, you know, like I said before, you know, we've got a, you know, many features within my prosperity, right? Um, but uh, it, it really is up to uh, sitting down, understanding what the first thing is that they're trying to achieve um, and then, you know, helping them implement that, which will flow on to the next thing. Um, yeah. So, but, yeah. And look, it is something, um, I mean, the, the single question I get asked the most <laughs> in various forms, of course, but it's generally the same thing. Oh, Peter, but what's the next thing I should implement? You know, what's the next hot thing? Because really they're asking me, oh, you know, what's the next hot app? And I always respond with, well, I can't answer that until I know what the problem is you're trying to solve. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And that's that's where any of this goes asunder because they choose the app before they've worked out their problem. 
<laughs> so, you know, knowing why you're you're approaching something makes I actually think massively increases the likelihood of the implementation succeeding um, because you're addressing a specific challenge or opportunity or whatever it is. There's a there's something that is driving this that therefore you're going to make sure it achieves. You know, whereas oh they talk about this a lot and I guess it's a new thing. I'll just get it and implement it. Well, it's it's not going to succeed because it doesn't have any direction. It doesn't have any focus. Um, exactly. Yeah, and and particularly with something like this. So A, it's it's a different approach potentially from what they've had, but also B, um, particularly in the evolution of Say My Prosperity, that all the elements you guys can now turn on in terms of this, this portal, it's a, a big suite of options. So, you know, to get that right, um, they're also going to have to know <laughs> what they're trying to achieve. So given that actually, why don't we just sort of cover off in terms of the, the big chunky bits. So you mentioned – um, having the the client having everything if their financial situation in one place. So I'm assuming that's sort of like the data feed or the, you know, the wealth picture for them. That's what bank bank feeds, balances, that sort of stuff. Talk us through that sort of element of the app. Yeah, look, it's about um not not just all the um data feed. So 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 um just to take it one little step back. So what, mm. what we find with a lot of um advisors uh the way that a lot of them successfully uh, implement My Prosperity is they use the must-have features with their clients. So right. when I say the must-have features, because the data feeds and everything, that's more um, like the nice-to-haves. Like, yes, yes, you can wire up assets and liabilities, and that's fantastic. Um, however, uh, and I think this is where the misconception sometimes comes out that we're actually quite expensive when we're not because <laughs> in the partner fee, you can actually roll out My Prosperity to all of your clients, you know, on the basic account, which doesn't cost you any extra. So all your clients can have an app, et cetera. Um, and you can do these must-have features because what do you need to do as an advisor? You need to sh- share documents with them, right? So you can yeah. share the documents. Um, you need to sign documents. So you can sign documents with them. So we've got unlimited digital doc signing. We don't charge per user. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, a lot of advisors uh, send, you know, compliance documents through to clients to sign off on or yep. agreements or, um, you know, a lot of product providers are, you know, uh, accepting our digital doc signing as well, which is great. Good, good. Um, and, and obviously the uh, secure chat rooms, that's become yeah. huge. So yeah. saying to clients, because it's a no-brainer, right? Saying to them, hey, uh, we are going to move away from emails because, as you know, emails aren't that secure and we're going to actually start, uh, you know, collaborating in these secure rooms where because you can create rooms for different topics as well, whether it's onboarding or an implementation room or something might come out of an annual review meeting where they yeah. want to create an insurances room or a super room or a wills room or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and... You can use all that on the basic account, which is great. So if you just want to use it with your clients and, and get them into that habit of, of collaborating with you, that's where we see the success. And then mm. and then advisors can can go, right, well, which clients now are we switching on the data feeds for? So so that yeah. they do have that visibility of their balance sheet, et cetera, there. Really good because um, I didn't mention this as well, but obviously we've got the digital um, fact finds as well. So yeah. Um, you know, so that's been really popular too in terms of being able to gather information even prior, you know, even with a prospect prior to them even coming in, you know, we can insert like a little video of the advisor just saying, you know, I look forward to meeting you, you know, prior to our initial meeting, here's some basic questions I need. Um, and the cool thing about our digital form is it's so easy to use at uh, you know, when the client comes in or if it's a Zoom meeting, the advisor can just have it on, you know, on the big screen and just keep going with it. Um, they can, you know, add documents, create to-dos, um, you know, put their own page notes in. And, you know, one thing that we're actually really proud of, which I'll talk about um, probably a little bit later if we touch base on integrations, but, mm-hmm. you know, our fact find, I'm so wrapped because we had a very basic integration with x but now we've got a uh, a fact find integration with X-Plan. So uh, awesome. a lot of that data goes uh, in there. So um, so that's another great efficiency to have. Mm. Um, it's so interesting, isn't it? And, and it's exciting to hear you sort of focus on the more, you know, client interaction stuff over the data feeds because I've always found I've always found the data feeds as a singular focus a bit curious because we might find data exciting. Lots of the public don't. <laughs> 
<laughs> like they're like, I don't care. I don't want to look at that all the time. What that's not going to make me log into the app. Whereas I think the misconception historically for advisors is, oh, this is you know the client's going to want to open the app all the time to see how things have changed. And I'm like, I I'm think we're overrating that. Yeah. Some might. Don't get me wrong. Some might, but. I actually think like any app, any app we interact with, you need to give them a reason to go. Like there's got to be some activity or some, like you say, interaction, chat, reminders, like all those are things that are going to cause somebody to interact, not randomly going, hmm, I wonder how my personal balance sheet is. You yeah. know, like it's it's yeah. just not how people think. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you know? I know. It's like, you know, yeah, how how often do they actually look at their spreadsheet, right? Because because essentially right. the balance sheet is a is a really cool spreadsheet just in the app. But Correct. the cool thing is is that a lot of advisors, uh, you know, say, you know what, this is really great for us. Like, yeah, it's yeah. cool for the client because you know they don't have to call us to you know understand their balances and they don't need to update you know us on information. We don't need to chase them. So on average, most advisors have told us that they save about five hours per client per review just by having that data there. Yeah, yeah, which is great. So it's like that combo. It's it's getting you know value to the advice process as opposed to value in and of itself, um, which you know. And well, look, data feeds could be powerful if you've um, designed a, a user experience. I mean, the advisor has that gets them to hop in and out of that. Like you've given them, like the, maybe they're learning about things or, oh, go and check this or, you know, has this, what's happened to this balance? Like if you've designed an experience, well, for sure. But if there isn't a something that's nudging them to check for that, just for that that element, then I question how often it all happens. So yeah, the I'm with you. The whole interaction thing is where the magic is going to happen. And, and we do have to get off email. <laughs> We don't have a choice. This is this is where it's where it's all going. Um, and I was listening to a session by a cybersecurity expert just days ago, who and I'm going to get this percentage figure wrong, but it was so high that really the actual figure is irrelevant. You know, ninety percent of cyber attacks start with an email. Yeah, oh, like. <laughs> absolutely. And it's quite interesting because sometimes you know when I'm when I'm showing my prosperity I might get drilled on security right and we and trust me we have a big spend mm. on security right uh, but then I just ask the simple question now that I've told you about our security how do you currently gather information from clients mm-hmm. email <laughs> yeah so absolutely I think yeah. you know what I think more and more advisors are aware of it now you know it is on ASICs radar so absolutely yeah. um you know they're 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 more aware of it day by day for sure and and i mean the truth is too that the the options we have have become you know more feature rich you know my prosperity has evolved over time too like these things have now become something that truly can be used as this interaction sort of hub um and that's where it's going to work so well um uh, for practices is where really the clients and your team live in this thing you know that's where yeah. that's where they really live so now you mentioned um you mentioned mentioned integrations. So uh, a deep X plan sort of connection is fantastic. That'll cover a lot of a lot of um, listeners in terms of the you know data coming in. Is it just data? Or is it notes? How does that work? How does the X plan interaction work? Yeah. So um, so we can bring in the client list uh, from X plan and the IPS feeds, and we can push out our balance sheet. So say if uh, if um, you know regardless whether the client's manually put it in or whether they're using the data feeds, that whole balance sheet can get pushed through. Mm-hmm. Now, now with the um, full fact find integration, it means all of those key um, fields that you need in X plan, they will get pre-populated, which is great from that from that fact find. So it means mm-hmm. that the, a lot of the double handling that, um, you know, support staff were doing, uh, that will be eliminated, which is great. So, um, so. So that's currently being tested by a lot of it. Yep. So it's ready. It's been currently tested by a lot of our partners. We're just getting a lot of feedback. We've got in-house surveys for them. Yep. Um, so I'm really proud to say uh, we've, we've had a high rate of, because um, I think it's like a smiley face to say this is amazing, uh, you know, a, a neutral face and a sad face <laughs> and uh, if that it doesn't work because obviously we want, we know that some integrations haven't worked over time and it is incredibly hard to do certain mm. integrations, right, and, and, and very costly. So, um, but we're really proud and we're really happy. Um, we are going to go to market with it very shortly. Um, but, but the feedback we've been getting so far from a lot of our, um, you know, 
I can't actually mention one of them, but he was just so excited and he just sent our whole team <laughs> a message and yeah, it was just, it's just been great. Uh, awesome. I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited because at, at the end of the day, as a tech company, um, when you go to market with something, you want to make sure it works. So uh, we're yeah. really, really, really um, passionate about that. And, you know, we believe the future is connectivity and integration yes. um, is something we're passionate about. So now that we've um, you know, uh, worked on our main X plan one. Uh, we've already got like a, a midwinter integration. I know advice, advisor logic's working with us as well at the moment. Yep. So it is all coming. Um, we, we're just, yeah, we, we've actually um, created a bit of fr- framework around our API as well, which we're really pleased about. So, um, awesome. so that is the future. Fantastic. And, and then in terms of how practices, so there's uh, things like the fact finder client data, uh, yes. which is great. There's also your, trail of breadcrumbs and what I mean by that is there'll have been you know chat and and conversation yes. effectively in the app yes um, and you know three years down the track and you need to dig into something and, and provide evidence at all how are how are practices doing that like is there oh well it just means we're going to have to you know look in the CRM and in the behind the scenes of the app or, or what are they doing to sort of ensure they've got that trail of breadcrumbs of the interactions with the client? Yeah, absolutely. So great question and very important for compliance as well. Um, mm. But we've got an export button in the room section so um, they can export the entire chat, all the documents associated with it um, into the zip file that will go, um, you know, that, that they can add into uh, Xplan. So Okay. So it's, not a, so it's more. It's not like an integration as such, but it's more of they can export it out and and add it into Xplan. So that could just be part of the rituals um, yes. that they undergo to ensure that yeah, fantastic. And I guess that's part of the reason it makes sense, you know, for rooms. Then as you were describing that, I can I, in my head I was thinking it's almost like events. It's like you okay, you've come up to a major event, you have a room for that. Once that's all finished, then you could you could do that you know, the export button and go, okay. And, we'll, yeah, we'll absolutely. It. And you know what? At the end of the day, you just want, uh, you know, you just want people in and out of the room as fast as possible, right? Because mm. we know, like I've spoken to advisors where they've said, God, before we had My Prosperity, it used to take us like two months to onboard clients, whereas now through rooms, they onboard them quite quick. They've got the in-app notifications, you know, everything can yeah. be through a room. It's just, yeah, more efficient. So that, that's been great feedback as well. Yeah, and it's an interesting shift in approach, isn't it? Because, um, in fact, I was literally just uh, in a webinar where we were talking through even how you set up files and things like that. And historically, often um, a client file might be broken up more into almost um, categories based on who's who they you know general correspondence, yes, but there might be advice docs, and then might might be you know paperwork, and then like they separate them, and then you know they therefore you've got to jump in and out of each one. Whereas actually the way we have those is more event based. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's this review for that time frame, and yeah. then under that is everything. And this is sort of similar, isn't it? The rooms are more yeah. like like this is a moment in time. What happened during that moment in time? Now it's done. Good. Move on. Yeah, like, and archive it. And you know what? Yeah. I do exactly the same um, with, with all my tax stuff, right? So yeah. I can go back. So rather than calling my accountant and saying, "Oh, where's that document from my tax return from you know <laughs> three years ago?" Yeah, I'll just go in there, and it's all there. You know, um, yeah, in all the different folders. Yep. To that end, um, do you, have you found any of the practices um, have clients who are sort of using the app as a bit of a vault in that sense? So it's not necessarily just documents for the process or for the advice process, but yeah, I mean, I don't know, like travel insurance yeah, documents estate. or like anything like that. Are they using yeah, it for other estate, things? Yeah, you know, estate planning is really big. So having all of their insurance uh, documents, estate planning documents, because once again, you know, God forbid something happens to the client, at least mm. everything's there. So all their documentation in there. So everything, you know, from, yeah, SOAs, ROAs, agreements, et cetera, all the way through to, you know, estate planning documents, POAs, um, yeah, all the insurance, um, you know, life and TPD insurance policies, you can add all of those in. Yeah, okay, fantastic. To that end then, um, just sort of taking a step back actually from what we were covering before, the the login or, you know, security. So this is an app on somebody's phone. Okay. Are you then, you know, suggesting to advisors that they get clients to make sure they've always got um, either face recognition or, you know, some other layer on Correct. the phone itself? Like is that what you're suggesting people do yes. to make sure clients are protected? Yeah, absolutely. So they can put in a password or face recognition um, and we've got MFA on both as well. So there's okay. MFA on the app and also on the practice portal. 
Fantastic, fantastic. And it's really important, I think, um, when we're introducing these things to clients to ensure that they're doing that. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's like use all the tools available to you to protect you, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah we yeah. can get caught up in inconvenience and that's fine, but the baddies out there are relying on us wanting to make things faster and skipping steps. So, yes. you know, things may take a little longer, but it's not that much longer, but, you know, it's there to protect us. So, you know, I'm, I'm, we are constantly reminding clients of that um, and just take the extra step. So let's talk about, so you've got your current users, a number, I mean, huge number of practices, which is great. Um, what are some things you feel like people aren't yet sort of taking advantage of? Is there any stuff that you're like, wow, you know, this is a great opportunity, you know, more of them could use that part of the app? Yeah, look, um, I think, t- to be honest, I mean, I like the nice-to-haves as well. Um, mm. I, think, I think a lot of firms uh, are using uh, the must-haves quite well. Yep. Um, but to be honest, I feel a lot of firms, um, and, and it, it takes a certain advisor on how to position this. And I'll give you an example. We've got one firm where, you know, she started using uh, My Prosperity, and this is years ago, like she's just a gun, and she's a one-man band, and she um, just, and, and her client base, by the way, is all pre-retiree ex-coppers, uh, well, sorry, coppers or ex-coppers, and yeah. <laughs> And it was just interesting because she said, you know what, um, uh, this is uh, this is just the best thing because I'm using it as a secure hub, but then at review time, I actually upgrade them because I tell them I actually need to see your data feeds and, and you know, and this is, and she, and she actually talks to them about security. She says, look, this is safer than internet banking because with internet banking, people can transact in it, whereas you can't on this. This is just right. read only. And she goes, and I need that read-only information. Um, and so, and and the way that she positions it is so well. So she's got, you know, a lot of her clients where, you know, she knows exactly where they're at. She doesn't have to chase for balances. Um, yeah. It's, it's, you know, they're happy because they've got access to it at any point in time. Um, and she uses all the um, must-haves, like she signs docs through it. She shares docs. She, she loves rooms. In fact... She was one of the first advisors that started using rooms um, uh, when lockdowns happened, actually. And I remember um, I was doing an interview with this particular advisor and um, and Peter McCarthy, <laughs> our founder, he actually popped in his head and he said, gee, you've opened up more rooms than a hotel quarantine worker. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that was really good. So, no, yeah. so, um, so I think, you know, have that. You know, at the bare minimum, just get your clients understanding that this is a secure hub and then you can have those conversations down the track at review time, you know, by updating all of their assets and liabilities and just having it there so that they see their full financial position and you can track it. Yeah, and I I think that is something I like that sort of staged approach um, which just eases people in, gets them also gets them used to it in a way that they understand before you then say elevate that experience, which is awesome. Um, but also, you know, we can't underrate how uninterested most people are in forensic accounting, right? Yes. And, and <laughs> so going to the trouble of digging out all these numbers, they're just not interested. So yeah. a little bit of magic that'll do that for them. Mm-hmm. I think a lot more people are happy to do that than we think. Um, yeah. You know, they just, it's, and I get it. You know, oh, it's a pain in the neck. Well, I've got to dig it out. And, you know, it's like, can't this just be done with them by, you know, a wave of the magic wand? Um, and therefore, you're right by positioning that correctly. Then it seems like the perfect solution. Absolutely. Um, um, which just, is great. And just on that too, I, I did forget to mention that um, with the app, you can actually customize how you want the app to look for, look like for your clients in the practice portal. So you can actually move around. So say, for example, you know, we've got a lot of pre-retiree firms, uh, you know, sorry, firms that look after pre-retirees, retirees, high net worths, etc. If you don't want the cash flow section on the screen, you can actually move it out or completely mm. delete it out. So you can actually have that unique customer experience uh, yeah. to each firm, which is great. So, yeah. so and, that- and the truth is probably everybody should be thinking that way anyway. Like what is your unique 
um, consumer experience okay. and the app is part of that, you know. So we should sort of have a bit of a map, shouldn't we, of how we see um, the experience for the for the client, the end client. Um, and, you know, like you say, is does it involve the cash flow thing or doesn't it? Does it, you know, so really making proactive decisions about when you expect to be in and out of the tool and, and how it's going to work. And I'm guessing that that's the difference between somebody successfully implementing it or not is whether they actually lean into that um, or just sort of see it as something to bolt on. Yeah, no, it, it definitely is. The the, the the firms that really customize that experience for their clients uh, and, and embrace that change and, and embrace, uh, you know, using the must-have features with their clients, they're the ones that, that certainly do do the best. So then let's talk about what's coming up. So, you know, what is, what's on the development path? What's, what's coming down the line that people can get excited about in terms of where you guys are taking the app? Yeah, just more integrations. I mean, we are investing a lot in, you know, the um, aesthetic look of the app, so to speak. But mm-hmm. um, but to be honest, it's integrations. We're, we're, we're spending a lot of money on that. We are, you know, spending a lot of money on you know, uh, making our API, uh, you know, more flexible for for other tech companies, etc. Yeah. Um. We've got we've we're already integrate with a lot of different investment platforms. Um. You know, we already get a whole heap of different data feeds from property, bank accounts, credit cards. You know, we started that um, open banking as well with some institutions too, which is great. But uh, essentially, for us, it's uh, I guess integrations and also security. Security. We invest a significant amount of um, time and money on security. We've got our ISO certification, so we just keep um, adding to our security. Fantastic. Well, as we all should, right? That'll be an ever ending as long as a piece of string, I think that exercise will be. We'll just all keep on iterating and improving over time. Anything else we've missed? Any parts of the app or, or the no, way it can be no, used? No, no. So, so basically, I guess our number one focus is just amplifying the value of advisors you know, and, you know, to do that uh, is to make it easier for them to get the right advice, service or product for, you know, for the right time with their clients. And we believe, you know, that's, uh, it should be seamless uh, in-app collaboration between the advisor and the client. So we're just going to keep working on, you know, helping with that collaboration piece. And um, yeah, there's lots of exciting things uh, that we're obviously um, in terms of integrations that we're working on. So slowly, bit by bit, we'll um, announce those as we go. All right, Advice Explorers. If you'd like to find out more about My Prosperity, then the website link is in the episode show notes, along with Carolina's LinkedIn details. So I'm sure if you reach out to her, then she'd be happy to point you to the right person in the team who could um, do a demo and talk you through how it might apply for your practice. Look, thank you so much for joining us, Carolina. The, I'm really excited about you know another tool that actually has some uh, history in the industry that's providing uh, you know a client portal option because uh, it helps that you guys understand us all so well um, and so understand how we've got to work and all the compliance challenges we face. So keep it up. I look forward to seeing what else you guys get up to in the future. No, thank you. And I've, I really appreciate you reaching out and uh, I've really enjoyed our session today. Beautiful. So are you a current user of My Prosperity? There's a good chance that you are with hundreds and hundreds of practices using it. Then if you are, please get on that Ensemble um, platform and share your experience, what worked, what challenges you face that maybe you can share so that people don't face the same ones if they decide to to implement the tool. We really want to hear all the pros and cons um, and anything you agree or disagree in my conversation there with Carolina. So now as for my thoughts one thing I did want to sort of cover off, I really do think we need to be honest with ourselves in this industry. And I guess I'm talking broader than financial advice. Um, We're also talking financial services here. We need to acknowledge that actually this isn't a game of keeping up with current technology. We're actually well behind the eight ball. So we're already way behind, right? So um, any of the stuff that we're doing now hasn't even got us, you know, line, you know, side by line, side by side, sorry, with other industries. Um, We've got a lot of catching up to do. So while um, it may feel like it's a bit difficult and a bit torturous, all of this tech stuff, we need to do this to even be able to compete. Um, So, 
you know, v- viewing these things as new and different and really a portal that doesn't se- make much sense or do I need to? We absolutely do. Um, and it's just that cyber hacks and all those sort of things have brought this to the fore. Um, and so whether it's my prosperity or another portal, it might be a portal attached to the CRM you use, it might be an external one. We're probably all going to have to, by the end of this year, this year being 2023, um, probably all of us are going to need to have one version of this at least, some sort of version that does some basic things to protect our clients' information. Now, the way to look at this though, and I I loved where she was going with that sort of description, is, you know, this is our virtual shop front, right? We don't have a, most of us don't have a store on High Street, but this can be it. It's just in, in, you know, Webland. Um, and so this is your virtual shop front. And so take advantage of the ways that you can interact with people in it. Um, think about whether, you know, if you're still struggling to get through to a client in the chat function of something like this, change the time of day that you're sending a message, change the type of message. So, you know, all that sort of thing, we can just the same thing you do in real life and in person or over the phone, you can, you can learn and do in these client portals. Um, and the key will be how well and how cleverly we onboard a client to this. You know, lots of helpful tips, lots of basic tips, how to log in, what to do when you first log in, what to do second after you log in, (laughs) taking them through the experience so they can see all the different elements, perhaps gamifying some of that. So they've got some to-dos when they first log into the platform that are actually merely about experiencing all the different elements, introducing them to the concept, say here, of a room, you know, getting them to sign something simple so that they can experience that process. So the better we design the onboarding, the more likely they are to use it. Um, And my final point with any of these sort of things, but particularly something that we get the clients to join us on the journey with is you've got to be serious about it. You need to have the full intent for the entire practice to be using this, right? We've got to fold it into every interaction. Um, If you're setting up a portal like this, but you're also then emailing people, then that's probably going to fail over time, right? We've really got to get them used to a new way of interacting with us, right? And, you know, email, maybe that's just a backup. Um, that We don't use that as the primary communication tool. So that'll require some you know, change and shift in mindset for your team and yourself, um, but that's what's going to really increase the like, likelihood of success. Now, as you know, there's only one skill we need to become bionic advisors, and that's avid curiosity. So today for the curiosity corner, I wanted to cover off GPT-4. Now we have already had a bit of a chat about chat GPT, but (laughs) GPT-3.5 is the model that's behind chat GPT, right? And and OpenAPI, the people that released that, considered that sort of a test run, letting the public at this thing and see what happens, right? Um, Whereas OpenAPI have released GPT-4. And of course, as it sounds, this is an upgrade. This is, has got more features and, and done in as improvement in the whole AI sort of experience. And what's interesting is the results are really incredible. So when ChatGPT took the a simulated bar exam, you know, for the bar solicitors, then it it generally performed in the bottom 10% of test takers, right? So, hey, it could take the test, but it didn't do all that well. GPT-4 so far has been in the top 10% of test takers taking a simulated bar exam. So, which is interesting, right? This thing is really improving over time. And something that's even more interesting is that it supports putting images in and then asking it questions about the images. It even understands the humor of memes, right? So it's really, really interesting. And I bring it up because to me, at the very least, we just need to understand it enough by playing with it. We just need to see what it's capable of. So GPT-4 is now available in chat GPT+. Plus. So I'd love to hear if you've already started playing with it, what have you used it for? What have, what's it worked really well for? What does it not work well for? Um, anytime you use these tools, remember, um, they aren't secure in the sense that if you put somebody's private information in there, that, that is not a secure space. So this is for something that you otherwise would do in the public. Um, if you're writing a blog, if you, you know, any of that sort of stuff, it's all fine. So, that's where I would encourage you to test the experience and see how it can prove potentially your, your comms, your marketing, your blogs, all those sort of things. Um, give it a good whirl. Hey, if the first trial is 
you know, writing somebody a wonderful 60th birthday message, then do that too. So um, either way, give it a try and let me know on the Ensemble platform how you go. Well, that's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice, tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And look, if you're feeling really overwhelmed about all this advice tech stuff, you don't know where to start on your advice tech journey, then I would encourage you to check out my Niche Down and Scale Up Masterclass with Jenny Pierce. It's going on in the next month or so as that session is actually two sessions will help you narrow down to the very best next thing for you to automate and streamline in your practice. And we're also going to be giving you tips and tricks on what tech tools could solve that problem or that thing that you're trying to improve, upgrade, or or even elevate the experience for your clients. So if any of this is of interest, then please reach out to me at LinkedIn. Uh, that's LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD, P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to ch- turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious. Oh, my God.